You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com. I'm Dr. Steve G. Jones. I'm here with my good friend, Jason Augustus Newcomb. Hi, Steve. Hey, Jason. All right, we're, in a, we're on a road trip. We're going on Route 66 today, and uh, we are in a car for uh, hours and hours, so we thought, well, let's make good use of our time. Let's get some useful information out there. So Jason has written several books. One of them is the new Hermetics. Did I say that right? You did for wow. the first time. Hey, I finally said it right. And uh, Jason's website is jasonaugustusnewcomb.com, by the way. He's written numerous books. The one we're going to talk about today in our car ride here on Route 66 in our convertible rental with the top not down. So you're going to hear a little bit of wind, but not as much as if we actually put the top down. And uh, Jason, let's start out by defining hermetics, what does that mean? Well, hermetics is an interesting word. I mean, obviously, there's a word that we still use called uh, hermetic, which means hermetically sealed, which means sort of enclosed to the point where it's going to pop when it when it opens. Okay. Uh, permanently sealed. So we can we can take the idea that hermetic in some way has something to do with secrecy or something like or you know being being closed off, but really it refers to um, Hermes the. Greek god of magic and communication, who in the ancient world was um, basically equated with the Egyptian god Thoth or Tehuti, who was an even more magical and, and divine being. And so there's really three definitions that of hermetics that apply to my book. One is the, the ancient world's hermetics, which would have been... Um, the, the worship of the mind, that the, that the mind of, of, um, of, the, of the universe is, is on some level at one with our mind. It's a, it's a very early version of, of what I think a lot of people believe nowadays, that you know, the universe is a great consciousness that we're all a part of, and that um, when we open our minds, we become more connected with the greater consciousness of the universe. And that was, that was the belief of the early hermeticists who are... Um, they had a. It, their writings were written by different people, but they usually gave the authorship of them to Hermes Trismegistus, which means thrice greatest Hermes. And supposedly the reason they they use that term is because um, Hermes in in ancient Greece was a was kind of a, a smart alecky god and a smart god, but he wasn't really a um, a wisdom god. And, but they equated him with Thoth, who was definitely a wisdom god. So in order to show that they weren't just talking about regular boring Hermes, they, they said that it was thrice greatest Hermes who, who wrote those things um, to more closely identify it with its original Thoth uh, thing. But, but I mean, but like I said, the, the real essence of it, you're making funny faces, so I feel like you're not, you're, you're like, Jason, I have no, no idea what you're no, talking about. No, 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 I was making a funny face because, as, as everyone knows, we're, we're driving. Actually, Jason's driving. I'm holding the iPhone while we record. And Jason just came up on a car pretty full speed and hit the brakes at the last minute. That's why I was making the funny face. <laughs> Not because of what you're saying. I'm just fearing, well, I mean, fearing for our lives here. <laughs> but please, please continue. I, I, I do apologize if I scared you. No, it's quite all right. I was, uh, I was trying not to show it. But apparently I in trying not to, you, you looked like you were dying. <laughs> or, <laughs> um, we survived. Okay, so uh, the... Uh, that, that's one aspect of hermetics. Another aspect of hermetics is um, the, the uh, alchemical movement that, that took place in Europe th sort of throughout European history up until um, the scientific revolution when all that sort of stuff kind of got pushed away. Um, that, that was also called hermetics. And, and, it, and it also incorporated aspects of, of magic, and that's the third aspect of hermetics, which is sort of a... Um, uh, a philosophical magic that that is designed to connect one with one's higher self and with the sort of invisible powers of the universe in such a way that one can become a more enlightened being. It's a sort of a yoga of the West, um, and uh, not 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 something that it, that has been exceptionally popular. Although it is mentioned in movies like The Secret and uh, stuff like that. They, they, they do mention hermetics and hermeticism. By name. By name in those movies, yeah, for sure. As, as being, like, sort of the source of their 
of their where they're coming from, but then they, they don't further reference that or, or mention that people like me are out there. <laughs> okay. But now so, we're, we're going to talk about more of that kind of thing in our in our marketing podcast mm-hmm. because we're going to talk about how you can take ancient concepts and bring them into the present uh, in a more uh, presentable way that's uh, more appealing to the masses. Sure. And Jason and I have talked about that kind of thing. So how you kind of bring marketing into this so that you get your message out to a larger group. Well, just, 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 we won't get into it too much, but I do just want to mention that Hermes was the god of commerce. And so um, marketers um, are actually sort of connected with Hermeticism in some ways because, and, and hypnotists as well, because Hermes was the god of communication and influence through communication. So uh, hermetics really covers both of those topics as well. So you're a, you're a hermeticist too, even wow. though you don't realize it. Well, I'm going to start telling everyone that. Yeah, no, what no, do you do? I'm a hermeticist. Yeah, I mean, because that's I, I'm going to tell you right now. It 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 it, it really goes over big. <laughs> <laughs> People, people love to hear that because then they say, "What is that? What is a hermeticist?" Herman- oh, it's a good uh, conversation piece. It's like a good a, conversation like starter, an odd piece but of it's art often. In your it's home. A, I think it's often a conversation ender too. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go now. <laughs> well, I, I I'm stuck with you in the car for hours. Right? No, so you, I can't go trapped, anywhere. You're trapped, yep. so. <laughs> so let's uh, continue delving into this. So, is there more for us to understand about? Well, uh, what I'd like to know is what what of what I said. What what. Oh. What did what um, what made any sense to you whatsoever? Well, most what of didn't it actually sense. did. Yeah. Well, uh, earlier when we were talking about what we were going to talk about, uh, we talked. We said that uh, a lot of times people uh, wonder if uh, this has anything to do with worshiping Satan or anything like that. Sure. Well, actually, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. Okay, uh, that'll whatsoever. be good for the listeners uh, to hear. Yeah, the, most the, listeners. The, I those, imagine there may be one. There may or two be a few that, that are into, into that. that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and certainly, I wouldn't exclude those people from from being able to be a part of it. But we, um, Jason, neither Jason nor I are into Satan as well. I'm not. Are you? No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm, no. I mean, I have. I actually have quite a few friends that are that are really interested in, in really? Satanism and stuff. And I'm not. I'm not. You know. I, I'm not opposed to them or anything like that, but I'm not. It's just not what I'm into. That would be um, fascinating to interview them as well. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a, it's an interesting group. Largely, uh, you know, I don't want to get too much into Satanism, but largely, like actual people who call themselves Satanists are largely just atheists who, uh, you know, who who believe that you should just do whatever the hell you want. Uh, um, that's why I'm the bad boy of the self help movements because I have friends who are Satanists. Oh, that is pretty <laughs> bad. That's, that kind of uh, scares me a little bit. It's like like knowing people in the mafia, or right? Something. No, it like, kind of is. What the, do Satanists it's, it's do? The, I mean, what do they probably put spells on people? Well, uh, you know, I would say pretty rarely. Okay. Yeah. That's I would say I would say more. The more people who put spells on people are are people who are sort of like um, spell spell creating people, like uh, hoodooists and and Ho- some hoodooists, hoodooists, or wow. hoodoo, hoodoo workers. Okay. Uh, spiritual workers. A lot of people who who are actually Christians. Put spells on people. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, um, it's a crazy world out there. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think there probably are some Satanists who put spells on people, but they also consider themselves to be magicians. But I don't think that um, calling yourself a Satanist necessarily means that you're going to be casting spells. Okay. Well, we actually got on a little sidetrack. Yeah, with we can edit thing. this whole Satan thing. Out. No, I think it's great. I think, <laughs> hey, you know, people want to know. That's. You said that's a question that people often ask. Sure, no, it is. And, and honestly, um, hermeticism has little to do with uh, any, anything other than may, maybe Kabbalah would be a good place that, that hermeticism kind of intersects with. Um, the um, alchemy is a good place that hermeticism uh, intersects with. Uh, all of which were conducted by people who were religious theologians and, and and stuff back in back in the in the day um we uh we've kind of we kind of try to simplify things and pigeonhole things a little a little bit more i think today than than people used to uh and so there there you know there have always been people who do things outside the norm you know that are that are thinking in different ways and hermeticism is really those people. 
<laughs> that are that are that are you know thinking as well. No, I, but I mean, it just it can kind of it, it is a kind of an umbrella that can that can that can so, blanket hold them. So and, to and be a hermeticist is to be someone thinking outside the norm, but to be someone who's thinking outside the norm is not necessarily to be a hermeticist. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting a little we're getting a little a little lost, but sure, I'll, I'll go little, with that. I'm getting uh, the road hypnosis. <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, so, so, I mean, hermeticism really specifically refers to um, that, that movement from the, the, er, the beginning of the common era, you know, back right around the time uh, of, of Christ, um, there was a there was a, a movement in Egypt of sort of um, gnosis and connecting with the universal mind uh, directly. Now you said gnosis. How do you define gnosis? Gnosis. Well, gnosis means knowing, and it's uh, it's the opposite of agnosticism, you know, or or uh, a gnosis. Um, it is people who know the divine, people who experience it directly, people who open up their consciousness to what is beyond the physical and experience it. So um, gnosis really refers to an even broader thing than hermeticism. I mean, real, realistically speaking, anyone who calls himself a medium or anyone who calls himself uh, you know, a psychic or any, all those people are experiencing some level of gnosis because they're, experience, they're directly experiencing something that is, that is beyond you know, they're, they're, they're having knowledge of the divine world in some way. And do you spell gnosis in the sense with a G? Yes. G-N-O-S-I-S. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And uh, their, their gnosis, uh, Gnosticism was sort of one of the early versions of Christianity that didn't, that didn't work out, that kind of got squished. Because it just wasn't very popular? Uh, no, no, actually quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of people adhere to it. I don't think that it was um, as suitable to be a world religion. Now we're getting into some dangerous territory here, but you know, the, the a Roman emperor basically created Christianity as we know it by having a council in which they decided what was what was cool and what was not cool. And his idea was Christians are willing to get themselves eaten by lions. So that sounds like a population I can deal with. Uh, let's 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 go to Christianity. Are, are, you, are you paraphrasing, or is that a direct <laughs> that's quote? A, that's an exact quote. Okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, so translated. Because when people start emailing about this, I want to be able to tell them that <laughs> Jason Augustus Newcomb said that the emperor was it the emperor of Rome yeah. said uh, it was Clement. Um, I think I believe. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we might need to edit that out, but <laughs> um, <laughs> if we edit everything, we need to edit out. Yeah, I mean, that'd be that'd be it's tough. Be a one-minute yeah, podcast. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We're gonna have to just go with it. That's right. Uh, it was. It was traffic an, slowing down. I see. I see. Okay, I, okay. Got, I got my all foot right. on the brake. All right. All right. Um, we're we're driving right now. I'm the, I'm the backseat driver in the in the side. No, seat. I just made you nervous. I'm sorry. I, yeah, that's okay. The whole thing kind of you know. I'm one of those people. I think you said your wife's that way. Oh, yes. Very can we much say so. that? Can yes. we say, do we have to edit that out? No, no. She likes to. She's definitely uh, a backseat driver. Command from yeah. not behind the wheel. Yes. Okay. Um, Okie doke. So uh, what else? So oh, so uh, back to what we were. Yes. Just, just to tie up what we were just talking about a second ago, uh, before the traffic got a little tighter here, um, and you and you got nervous that I was misquoting a Roman emperor from. from <laughs> No, it's an exact quote. You told right, me. Right, no, so. it is, absolutely. Fine with it. What did so, he say again? So, he said, any <laughs> oh, yeah. people who no, no, be yeah, eaten yeah, by I mean, lions. Christians are willing to be eaten by lions. Okay. And, and so that sounds like a population that it would be extremely easy for me to deal with as a ruler. <laughs> so let's all become Christians. That's basically you know, okay, okay. a direct quote. People Googling uh, that right now. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead and Google okay. it. Okay. Yeah, it's worth it. I would, but I have no reception because we're in the <laughs> middle of the We're in the middle of the desert, desert yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I mean, you know, in, in truth, the, the, there were books that were a part of a lot of people's spiritual lives that were pulled out of Christian scripture and then, you know, other books were put in and, and there were definitely people on that council who believed that some stuff, uh, some beliefs should have been in it, but they were outvoted and that's, that's the Christianity that, that ended up being the world religion, you know, up 
until today. Well, having having been a preacher myself yes. for the Church of Christ for five years, not the Church right. of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, but I'm a different you, Church of Christ. I'm making you uncomfortable, huh? No, no, no. I was <laughs> I was a preacher from 1990 to 1995, so I'm no longer involved in that. But I am aware of the controversy concerning that and the origin and what's uh, in the canon, meaning the you know actual the approved actual, books, yeah. and what's not. So that is actually uh, correct. One of the one of the books that I've that I've recently been done is a is a translation of something called the Gospel of Thomas, which is actually a saying source. It's not a, it doesn't have a full narrative in it, but it's actually a bunch of sayings from Jesus. Um, and they're and it's, it's a fascinating book because they're extremely similar to a lot of the things in Matthew and uh, Luke um, and Mark, uh, but but just different enough that they are pretty. Um, it's 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 interesting to see how you know different people kind of interpreted that stuff, and I and I can't say which is more correctly, you know, the correct teachings of, of Jesus or anything. But it's it's you don't have any quotes from Jesus that we don't otherwise know about. I can't think of a good one. I mean, it, the the what ends up falling away is is all of the stuff about you know worrying about the future and worrying about um, whether you're going to fry in hell and that sort of like none of that is in there. It's all it's all very imminent. It's all very right now. You got to do this not because you're going to fry in hell if you don't, but because it's just this is going to introduce you to a, a greater knowledge. And that, as you as you know, and as listeners may know, is also controversial because obviously the church does not really uh, sure believe what you're saying now. No, and I'm I'm not trying to <laughs> and say I'm not, that, and I'm say not that. representing the church. I'm just <laughs> no, no. I hear you. No, I I I just I, I I'm not trying to say that anyone's anyone's beliefs are right or wrong. I just I think it's an interesting look at history. Um, do we do we need to do yeah, something? Yeah, you have to roll down your window. We're at an inspection point. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. I saw that we're in a very little car and that we're probably not smuggling people into the, yes. <laughs> into the U.S. or <laughs> he whatever. Said, whatever he saw that I'm interviewing you and he didn't want to be interviewed himself. Because <laughs> <laughs> that might have happened. Yes. So I think we are uh, at a good wrap-up point for this podcast. Is there yes, anything? I, I want to apologize to all my, my Christian friends for upsetting them. Just yes, now, all so. your Christian friends, uh, anyone who may... Uh, yeah, and, oh, and all, and all my Satanist friends who are also upset with me. So I think you kind of brought Satanism to light a little bit and didn't really uh, say anything too bad about them. I mean, okay, most, most people would say things about them, I mean, even if they didn't know about them. I've never met anyone who was... Who claimed to be a Satanist? Yeah, I mean, it's just probably not a popular thing to say. Maybe I met them and they just didn't say it. Probably not, no. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd run. If they saw that you were also wearing some sort of... It's like a penta, that, pentagram yeah, yeah, or yeah, something, something that like that. Have, yeah. <laughs> Are you a Satanist? No. My friend Jason Augustus Newcomb gave me this. He told me it would be fun to wear at parties. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to leave us with about uh, Your, her, I, hermetics? I, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've self-assassinated my character here, but that's all right. Hey, that's it's all it's, it's all in good fun. That's right? what happens on Route 66. <laughs> we get our kicks. Uh, yeah. Well, people who are interested in learning more about what I actually do uh, can yes. go to my website, jasonaugustusnewcomb.com. No, no Satanism. <laughs> uh, I imagine no Christianity either. Um, uh, well, I mean, there's that Gospel of Thomas thing. The Gospel of Thomas. <laughs> oh, I actually wrote a book. I actually wrote a book Did about you write Jesus. A gospel? You wrote yeah, a book about Jesus. Yeah, it's called How the Teachings of Jesus Could Save America. Okay, okay. And it's actually about, you know, just taking taking a look at what Jesus actually said and seeing how that would that would be an awfully nice world to live in. Okay, um, so, that's a nice thought. Yeah, I, yeah. I, th I think a lot of Christians would actually agree with that. Sure. Um... And uh, my site is jasonaugustusnewcomb.com, and if you go there in the next, uh, what is it, like seven or eight months? Oh, I think you say minutes. Seven yeah, or eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably should, right? That's the. We're going to talk about that later. Keep um, in mind, this is going to be an evergreen thing. This is going to be right. on the internet for the next uh, ten thousand years. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but if if it's within the next one year or so, you can get a thirty percent discount on my Meaning site. Meaning, if it's by what date? Uh, January 1st, 2017. Okay, so if you're listening to this in 2028, for example... Yeah, it's over. It's yeah, done. you missed but it But you can still get... You can still... Even years. though I'm dead, my children are still <laughs> running the site, and they... And, and they, they, and they need you, your money. That you can you can go and, and download things from there, there too. So, okay. uh, that site's jasonaugustusnewcomb.com, and if you use the code Steve G. Jones, all in capital letters... You gotta shout it. Steve G. Jones, in capital letters... Perfect. You can get... 
a 30% discount. Oh, I think it charged more if you use it. <laughs> Maybe. There's a penalty. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Type it in and see what happens. See what happens. <laughs> see if you're, you get a computer virus if you type that in. <laughs> don't say that. No, don't say that. We'll but you should out. go there. And, we actually and won't edit that out. Steve, funny. Steve actually loves all my stuff and uses it all the time. That's how he's become such an amazing person. Jason's so. the secret to my success. Um, so, so you I, should go there. <laughs> Jason actually did uh, did help me. Yeah, well, we're we, going to talk about that in a different podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about mar our marketing podcast. But he actually did help me in uh, marketing concepts early on. Because <laughs> Jason is just a fountain of marketing ideas. And uh, I took a few of them and ran... Uh, for a field goal with them, you field goal? No, I no, ran no, for a right. touchdown. No, you ran you for can't a run for a field ran, goal. You ran for a for a Super Bowl game played over and over again. Well, yes, yes. I mean, you 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 you've gone so far past where I went at, well, with that stuff. But, you know. Well, we're going to give credit where credit is due in a in a future podcast, <laughs> <All right. laughs> meaning in about ten minutes from right. now, <laughs> after, after we after we stop here for a bit. As it were, a ghost town road. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That sounds that sounds promising. Sounds like a place uh, <laughs> the Satanists are probably gathering. Uh, nothing, right. Not that there's anything wrong with that, as Seinfeld would say. All right, thank you, Jason Augustus Newcomb. Available at jasonaugustusnewcomb.com. You will not get a virus by downloading anything or typing anything. You, you was, will get some excellent products if you go there. Yes, you will. Jason is a good man, as you can tell. He has a lot of information. He just wants to help. So check it out. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com.